If you're new to IEMs, you probably have heard of the brand KZ. They've been around for many years actually. In fact, like when I just began the IEMs, they've also already been around for a while and many people out there who are like really into IEMs right now have started on KZs or have heard of KZs when they started and it's actually KZs like 10th anniversary this year. They've released their new KZ ESX. So let's talk about it. <laughs> Now, before we get started, though, uh, KZ did send this out to me for review, but this won't affect my review in any way, shape, or form. Everything you're gonna hear here is gonna be my own personal opinion. Also, this is gonna be more of a gaming focus review. Review will be focusing more on like how well this will do in games, but I will have to touch on like audio file aspects a bit to like kind of relate that and tell you why it is the way it is and why it's good in games with those audio file aspects. So, uh, that being said, let's get started. First off, is the box, which is pretty simple and is like most other budget IEMs. And inside this box, it's a little bit different, having the little medallion for 10 years of an anniversary. But anyway. In Inside the box, you're gonna get the IEMs, of course, a cable, a bag of different size ear tips, as well as a little medallion I was mentioning earlier, which is two sided and it's kind of neat, I guess. But other than that, we get some paperwork that tells us thanks and some more papers. <laughs> now, the cable you're gonna get is the standard KZ cable that they have with most of their modern IEMs these days, and it's a very nice cable. It's thick, it's durable, and hard to tangle. It uses an angled 3.5 millimeter jack, and at the split, it's very simple due to the very simple unbraided design, but this isn't necessarily a bad thing because it also easily allows the cable to be thick even after the split. Meanwhile, at the end, you're gonna get some ear hooks as you always do these days. Now on to the IEMs themselves, which I dare say look fantastic. Being made of metal and plastic with this geometric fancy design on it, this is definitely one of the coolest IEMs out there. The build quality and the design aesthetics also continue onto the, even the sides of the IEMs. And even the inner transparent side looks very well built. On top, we're gonna get the protruding style two pin connectors. As for the nozzle, it is made of plastic, but it does feel fairly sturdy and of course does have a grill. Now for the fashion conscious, here's how they look like on my head. They're pretty standard size IEMs. They're not too big, not too small, and it should fit most people's ears pretty well. Comfort wise, they're fairly comfortable and light, and I can definitely wear these for very long hours on end without getting too fatigued. Though do mind your mileage will vary depending on the size and shape of your ears. Though I do think for most people out there, you're gonna be fine. Now considering the fairly nice build and the really nice looks of these things, and the fact that these are KZ's 10th anniversary like IEMs, one would think they would have a higher price, but no, they did the most KZ thing possible. They made them cheaper. They are around 20 bucks, and sometimes you can even find them for even less than 20 bucks, which is pretty shocking, but pretty nice. And well, actually it's not that that's shocking. You can't take the heart out of, like, you know, KZ. They're known for budget stuff, and for their 10th anniversary thing, I think it makes sense that they would stick with this whole budget thing while making it very nice. Bang for your buck, that's what they want, you know? Unfortunately, they didn't send me the version with a mic, so I can't do a mic test with this guy, so that, yeah, I'm sorry, guys. Now, with all that aside, let's talk about the sound of these guys and try to make it, like, kind of short, because my other reviews have gotten really long when I got to this part. So, considering the sound of the ESX 10th anniversary editions, they are kind of neutralish with a warm-ish lean, which is very prevalent in the bass region, which is, I guess, where we're to start with. So at the bass range, this thing has a pretty good, deep, low reach, and those really low notes, bring up those really low, rumbly notes, and the presence in the lower bass is really it's, it's really strong, so you got a really good amount of rumbliness, good amount of boom to the sound. Moving up the bass range to like the mid bass and upper bass, it's kind of, it's okay. It's not nearly as strong as those lower bass, you know, presences, that's very present. The mid and higher upper basses, um, it's decent enough where you get like a decent amount of punch, it's not like a really strong, impactful crazy punch but a good enough punch where you'd be pretty satisfied with it I wouldn't say it's like a punch a bass head would like it's like a punch a normal person that would like the bass head would definitely love that super deep rumble though which is gonna be really great for like um, non-competitive games which we'll get into a little bit later now the bright side about the bass range being the way it is is that it doesn't bleed into the mids so the mids still get to shine and the mids here are surprisingly clear and detailed they aren't really like recessed nor are they too forward they're just I guess they're kind of balanced or neutral ish that's kind of where they sit but without like losing any of their detail details and clarity. You get a lot of those details within the mid-range and it's 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 good because you can really hear like the textures and whatnot, which is then enhanced by like, you know, once we move to the upper mids to the highs where you still get more of those clear details. Though I do think that the, you know, the high range is, is a little bit relaxed to try to make it like a nice, easy listening experience while still giving you a good amount of detail, you know, not taking that away. Now remember to keep your expectations within like the, the proper scope because these things still are $20 IMs, but even then, all things considered, they sound as good, if not better, than IEMs that are like twice its price to even like three times its price. It's not going to be as good in terms of like overall quality as like say an Aria, which are definitely way more expensive than these. But you know, all things considered, these are 20 bucks and as they're like creeping up to that level of quality or at least medium halfway there, I'd say it's pretty damn good. Moving on then to like soundstage and imaging, it is just okay overall. The soundstage is small. It's like average size for an IEM, so it's not going to like shock you in any way, shape or form. It is like fairly roundish. It is definitely more on the overlier side where there's more width than there is depth, but the depth is actually pretty okay, so it's not like a crazy wide.
oval. It's still fairly rounded, so you have an okay amount of depth in front and behind you. The height is just okay. It's not bad by any means. There is a slight sense of like the vertical direction, so it's not bad overall. The way it uses the soundstage in terms of like, you know, imaging is okay. The, the imaging, I say, it's pretty accurate. It's not like crazy mega super pinpoint accurate, but it is fairly accurate. I wouldn't have too much problems finding where things are, especially in the gaming world. I'd say that the KZ ESXs are definitely best suited for non-competitive games, particularly ones where there's a large world because it can really take advantage of that lower base, giving oomph and body to the world. It makes the world feel really huge and spacious. And then at the same time, giving you all those little details with the mids and the highs playing in. So you get like a really good feeling and sense of like, not just the size of the world, but the the atmosphere and the sounds of the world itself. It's just very enjoyable overall. It helps you just really immerse you into the world of the game. I do think if the soundstage was bigger, it would be even better, but you know, with what you got, it's it's okay. These are 20 bucks. Manage your expectations here. Now, as far as more like competitive games are concerned, like more competitive shooters, these things actually do a pretty okay job. The soundstage and imaging being pretty decent in these situations gives you a pretty good general idea of where enemies are. It's not like super mega pinpoint, as I've mentioned before, but it still gives you a good sense of where enemies could be. And this combined with the fact that we got a good mid and a high presence and a good amount of detail in both those regions, we were able to track enemies' footsteps pretty easily, though, you know, pinpointing them, it could be a little bit more difficult. General sense of where they are, which is, you know, what most of us kind of need, is pretty good. I do think the low end can be kind of distracting at times because if there's a lot of sounds giving a lot of oomph uh, going on around you and, like, when there's a lot of sound going on, it's a little bit harder to track for sure. Especially if, like, there's, like, grenades or explosions happening all around you, triggering all those low notes, you know, pop possibly covering and jumbling up the sounds you're trying to track for. So, you know, it's, it gets a little hectic. So, you know, when it comes to competitive shooters, there are better options out there, of course, but if you're using them for like, you know, competitive shooters and you're playing them non-competitively, these, these things will do perfectly fine. For like competitive, competitive kind of shooters, I would recommend something else. And that's probably where people would be like, oh, well, well how do these compare to the Moondrop 2s? Well, they're both two very different monsters is what I can tell you. The Moondrop 2 is definitely less on the base side. It's like, um, it's if this was designed in a way where you took away the base zone so that it would be better for competitive shooters, but not nearly as good for non-competitive shooters. So like, you know, compared to like the Moondrop 2s, these things aren't as good in more competitive situations. The Moondrop 2s will definitely excel in those situations compared to these. However, in non-competitive situations, I would say that the ESXs do such a much better job. And I think they're overall just a more enjoyable sound and easily listened to compared to the Moondrop 2s for most people out there. I think more of the general populace would enjoy the ESXs over the Moondrop shoes. An audiophile is the kind of person, or an entry-level audiophile person would be the person who enjoys the Moondrop shoes more, or the person who plays more competitive shooters more seriously versus playing more, like, non-competitive things more seriously. Now, compared to a lot of the KZ IEMs I've heard around this price range of like $20, $25 to even $30, these are definitely my more favorited ones. I think these things do like the best within like that price bracket of like $20 to $30 as far as I've heard so far. KZ does make a whole lot of IEMs in that price range though, so my, my opinion can definitely change in the future. But, you know, with that being said, that's pretty much all I have today for, you know, these guys. So if you do want to buy these, I will have a link in the description in case you don't want to purchase them. And, uh, you know, that's, I, I don't know if it gives me a kickback, but I, you know, links down there so in case you do want to purchase these lovely little guys. So yeah, that, 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 that's it. Like if this video did help you out, subscribe if you want to see more content, notification bell if you don't want to know when I post next, and uh, yeah, that's it. So um, got more stuff to come. I actually have another set of KZs, which we'll check out a little bit later. So that being said, see you guys next time.